everybody to the dream series, dreams and visions. Today we are talking about mermaids and other water spirits that people have in dreams. So the word um, mermaid comes from 1300s and from the Middle English mer, which means sea, and also mermaid, look at the spelling on the screen, and merewif. The name comes from niquis or niquisi, and from the root word pie, which actually means to wash in water. In Swedish, the word is necker or nicker, and in German, it refers to a crocodile. Norwegians call them nike and naki in Finnish. Nickers is Old Icelandic, which also refers to hippopotamus or another water monster. In Germany, they mostly appear as females called the Rhine Maidens. A female marine creature in folklore, having the head, torso and arms of a woman and a tail or a fish, is what is considered to be a mermaid. Alright, so let me just start off by saying these are water spirits. And water spirits are exactly what it says, a demonic spirit. Water spirits do exist and they are not to be taken lightly. Uh, the English female river maidens or nix in German are male water creatures and are water spirits that can change their shape apparently like mermaids. They usually appear to humans at any daytime and then change at night to be mermaids. There are also other water spirits depicted as a worm or a dragon instead of a human-like creature. Now water spirits are often known as mermaid spirits or the queens of the coast or mammy water spirits and they've also got other names. The prefix mer in mermaid in many ancient languages means sea and the gender plural is merfolk or sea people. They are sometimes mistaken for the Greek mythology sirens especially the Odyssey, the half-bird Femi Fatalis, whose captivating voice would attract sailors to them. Mermaids is a symbol of temptation for many cultures since they are half fish and half women and they tempt men by sitting on rocks combing their long hair. In this way they attract passing sailors and then initiate them either through drowning or killing them. Pictures, as you can see on the screen right now, are often used in literature depicting mermaids and they catch the imagination of young girls, although this is far from the truth. Mermaids are not a cuddly, enchanting little beauty with lovely long hair, contrary to common beliefs worldwide. Animal Planet has revealed the shocking truth of real mermaids recently discovered. So there are many dreams that I've received in a, many years, uh, a long time ago, uh, with regards to mermaids. Like for instance, there was a young boy who dreamed that he was engaged to a lady and when he combed her hair at night before they got married, she turned into a mermaid and with her long hair she strangled him and pulled him down the sea and drowned him. Well, this is a disturbing dream and there were many such as these. So let me just talk about positive and negativity. Uh, and what it means to have a dream of a mermaid. So on the negative side, it talks about a seducing spirit, flirting, killing, deceiving, barrenness, miscarriage, physical drowning, lying and cunning spirit, destruction spirit, deceiving, judgment that is coming, economic loss and business worries. So you can see there's a lot of negative things with regards to the mermaids. And then if you go to the word of God, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 5 verse 8, you shall not make for yourself to worship a graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth. Okay, so in Exodus 1 verse 22, you remember the story when Pharaoh charged all his people to say, Every son that is born to the Hebrews you shall cast into the river Nile, but every daughter you shall allow to live. Well, these were actually um, sacrifices made to the river gods by the Pharaohs. And that is one of the reasons why every son that was born to the Hebrews had to go into the water. Alright, so there's many others like these in the Bible. There are 
talks about uh, things that happened like in Mark 5 as 1, the story of the man that was uh, on the sea at the region of Gazarenas. And then there was in John 8, 36, the son uh, that is Jesus Christ that will liberate you and make you free. And then you will really and unquestionably be be free because if the sun sets you free you are free indeed that's what the scripture says now let's talk about general interpretations of uh, a mermaid so dreams regarding water spirits are most of the time negative and could be a warning or a judgment that is coming uh, it talks about destruction and deceiving and if someone dreams of a statue or picture of a water creature it is most likely that god is saying something about the item and it would not be good Statues of things always mean that the thing is not alive. It is therefore physically dead or spiritually dead. Mermaids are mostly naked in dreams and this would indicate that you or someone that you know may suffer economic loss. Sometimes such dreams can be followed by severe reverse of fortune. Dreams such as these are mostly followed by periods of business worries, lack of things, money losses and a feeling of wanting more but unable to get it as a child of god you should take note of these dreams and pray about them and cancel them and cancel of the spirit by faith in jesus christ god said we have dominion over everything that he created so therefore take authority and speak life over the situation according to the word of god no image is to be made that is in heaven in the earth or in the waters this includes all water spirits or images such as sea fishes, sea snakes, mermaids, mermen and nymphs and water fairies and anything representing Atlantis, Poseidon, Neptune, the queen of the sea or any other mythological objects and or images. I have often seen images of mermaids in bathrooms at people's houses or seen pictures of water nymphs on bags of little girls that they take to school or Atlantis pictures with a man from Atlantis swimming refer also the television series and there are many people all over the world that have tattooed themselves with some or other water god like Zeus, Neptune or Poseidon well God's word is very clear that you are not allowed to worship these images the question is can these things do any damage if you just keep them in your room and not worship them many people would say no and i agree since i also understand that jesus christ whom we serve is much mightier than any spirit and if we serve jesus then no other spirit will be able to touch us according to isaiah 54 verse 17 that says no weapon formed against us shall prosper but let's look deeper at the word of god his word also states that we should keep our minds filled with good things that are pure and righteous things that are above which is jesus christ look at ephesians 4 verse 8 and the scripture is very very important so my question is this is it good to look at mermaids if you children look at these images the whole day and see them everywhere in their room where they spend most of the time, will it not affect them? Then they are not thinking about Jesus. They are thinking and looking at these images of water spirits or mermaids. If these things are in their minds, most likely it will influence their subconscious minds and come through in their dreams too. An adult who lives in life with Jesus Christ would not be influenced by these spirits since we know that Jesus Christ abides in us and is greater than any other spirit. But what about a six-year-old little girl or three, three years old? Do they understand that Jesus lives in them? No. At that age, they are influenced by what they physically see around them. So please, mothers, keep your daughter's room free from water spirits like mermaids, the Little Mermaid curtains and bedding and cushions and couches and things like that. The Zionists use a lot of special water in rituals and the whole congregation is controlled by water spirits and demons. Barren women are given special water to drink and nearly every firstborn after drinking that water dies. It's a sacrifice that they are giving to the gods, the water spirits. 
They see it as a sacrifice. So the sacrifice of the firstborn to water spirits is a very old tradition coming from the Egyptians. And you can go and read Exodus 1. It may cause that many never marry or are barren forever if they do give sacrifices like this to the water spirits. But as Christians, we also use holy water when we pray for people and the Spirit of God heals people when we use holy water. I have prayed many times over people that were sick using the anointed oil or holy water and praying through the blood of Jesus Christ and His sacrifice. And people did get delivered from illnesses and afflictions or sicknesses in their physical bodies and they were totally healed by the blood of Jesus Christ and by His name. So let me draw your attention to the following scripture in God's word where the water was made holy by God Almighty and He healed people. In 2 Kings 2.19, the men of the city said to Elijah, Behold, this city is pleasant as my Lord see, but the water is bad and the locality causes miscarriage and barrenness in all animals and people. And he said, God, bring me a new bowl and put salt, the symbol of God's purifying power in it. Okay, this was the prophet that said that about God. And they brought it to him. And then Elijah went to the springs of the waters and cast the salt in it and said, Thus says the Lord, I, the Lord, not the salt, have healed these waters. There shall not be more any death or miscarriages or barrenness and bereavement because of it. And so the waters were healed to this day. So you can see that God even allowed the prophets to use holy water and therefore we as prophets today also use um, holy water for healing. From 2 Kings 2.19 we note that the waters were bad and infected by water spirits and the place where it was situated was not good either. Where the water was situated it was causing miscarriages and barrenness and by everyone who drank it, animal or human. Because prophet Elijah ordered that salt be thrown into the water, it became clean and it became, well, the salt was the symbol of God's purifying power. This is why even today I use salt to throw it all around my house because it is God's purifying power. So Elijah went to prophesy over the waters that God has healed them and they were henceforth free from water spirits that caused barrenness and miscarriage. In the Bible times, the people who built cities built them underground rivers or close to water streams where they knew water spirits were actively working. They understood that water was a gateway for water spirits in the same way that mirrors are gateways for spirits of light or wind, a gateway for air spirits. Familiar spirits like fortune tellers and witches, etc., have cursed waters of cities so that barrenness was a problem for that city. Without children, the city could not prosper. These witches bewitched the water source of a city so that the population was crippled. Scriptures show as a demonic problem which had to be sorted out and God used his prophet Elijah to prophesy over the waters, delivering them. And the word of God states that those waters are free even till today and this is such an amazing promise. And look at John 8, 36. When the word of God sets you free, you are free indeed. Well, in Exodus 1, verse 22, uh, remember I mentioned quickly earlier that every male child of the Hebrews must be thrown into the Nile. The Pharaohs want to get rid of all the newborn male childs and decided to bring an offering to the nail gods, those are water spirits, whom he worshipped by throwing them into the Nile. Little did Pharaoh know that what he had sown he would reap, because later in Exodus 13, God decreed through Moses that every male child in Egypt would be killed by the angel of death passing through the land. And you can go and read Exodus 13 verse 15. God did not ask for a sacrifice of blood. He merely took away from Pharaoh what he stole from the Hebrews, and he did it twice. The Bible says that Pharaoh killed the Hebrew children under two years old. We see therefore that God later returned the favor by allowing every Egyptian male in the army of Pharaoh to drown in the waters of the Red Sea when they went after Moses and the Israelites. The saying from God's word, what you sow you will reap comes to mind in Galatians 
6 verse 7. Look at the scripture there. Pharaoh also didn't know that he had made a physical manifestation by allowing the daughters of the Hebrews, those are God's children, to live. In the spirit, this manifestation resembles the fact that female child, the child of the bride of Christ, shall never be killed but always live. The children of God, those are believers, can therefore not be torched or touched by a pharaoh or a devil. Let's look at Ezekiel 29 verse 3 and look at the screen for the scripture. The Lord says, Behold, I am against you, Pharaoh king of Egypt, the great monster of sluggish and unwielding strength that lies in the midst of the dental streams, boastfully declaring. So you see, he's talking about the Pharaoh, the king, which is a water spirit in the streams. Okay. So the river Nile is my own and I've made it for myself. That is why the that is what Pharaoh, the king of Egypt said. So let us go to another scenario regarding water spirits from the word of God. The country of the Gadarenes was one of the places Jesus used to preach the gospel. The word Gadarenes means reward at the end. This name depicts that whatever happens there, there would be a reward, eternal life or spiritual life or physical life for all who passes in that region. This region was first given to Reuben, the firstborn, and Gad and Manasseh from the 12 tribes of Israel. They were Jacob's sons. Since they previously refused to go to war, they were commanded to go first into this region without their wives and possessions and go to war to possess the land. And you can read about that in Deuteronomy 3 verse 18. The name Reuben means behold a son or vision of a son. Reuben was the brother who wanted to save Joseph when the other brothers wanted to kill him and he suggested they throw him into the pit instead of killing him. In such a way he was going to try later and rescue him. The name Gad means good fortune, good luck, and the name Manasseh means one who forgets or forgetfulness. Now the above region where these three brothers first refused to cross the Jordan until they were forced is the place where Jesus and his disciples crossed over the lake to get to the other side. Notice, however, that when Jesus went over the lake, a great storm like a hurricane came up in such an extent that they almost drowned. And this happened while Jesus was sleeping. Now naturally the sea, the rocks, the wind, the trees and waves would never stand up against Jesus because God made them and they obeyed God. But while Jesus was sleeping, the water waves and a hurricane appeared trying to kill Jesus and the disciples. So let's think about this. The Word of God teaches us that everything which God has made gives Him glory. The sea waves would never challenge God who made them on their own authority. So at that moment, the water spirits controlled the waves while Jesus was asleep in human form and the hurricane appeared. And you can go and read the story in Mark 4, verse 35, 36, 38, and down to verse 41, when they were filled with great awe and fear because he told the storm to be still. We notice that immediately when Jesus spoke to the wind and the sea to be still, they obeyed and the water spirits were gone. Just by the sight of Jesus standing up on the boat, talking to the wind and sea and hearing his voice, the water spirits flee. While Jesus spoke to the wind and sea, knowing that they were under the influence of water spirits. That's why he said, hush now, be still. In verse 39, we notice that the wind was exhausted after being rebuked. In the same way does a person feel exhausted after a demon spirit was cast out of him or her. Any person that had gone through a deliverance knows how physically tired one can be after being delivered from a demon. Furthermore, there was immediately a calmness and peacefulness over the waters. Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. He brought peacefulness over the seas after rebuking the water spirits. He took authority over the wind, over the hurricane problem, and delivered the wind and sea that was under the influence of the water spirits, thereby calming them with perfect peacefulness. With the next verse, Jesus asked the disciples how they do not have faith in him, 
denoting that they were so fearful of the hurricane under the influence of the water spirits that they did not think Jesus could do anything. The disciples' fear was for the water spirits that was in control for a brief moment. They did not realize that with them was Jesus, somebody with much more greater power until Jesus proved to them that he can deliver even the sea and the wind from the water spirits. And how much more then was he a person that could deliver them? So any dream where an animal or animals came out of the water towards you would have to be very carefully examined. You need to look at detail of the dream uh, and what kind of animal it was and from which side it came. Was it in a lake or a river or the sea? Also give attention to how many there were and what color the animals were. And also another interesting factor would be the kind of emotion that was portrayed in the dream. Were they huffing and puffing? Were they angry or irritated? Were they loving and caring? Were they full of compassion and were they screaming or pulling faces? Let's look at the scripture in God's word in Exodus 8 verse 5. The Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your hand with the rod over the rivers, the streams and canals, and over the pools, and cause frogs to come up out on the land of Egypt. Note that frogs came out of the waters. These were water spirits. The above scripture refers to frogs which are loathsome spirits in Revelation 16 verse 13. They came from the mouth of the dragon, the beast and the false prophet. Both the dragon and the beast could have been creatures living in waters and therefore they could have preferred to water spirits, which is why the frogs came from the rivers, the canals, the pools, and the streams. While looking at Mark 5 verse 1 to 13 and verse 15, we notice that Jesus and his disciples came to the region of the Gerasenes. This region was known for demonic activities since the residents allowed the man to stay in the tombs. This man was mad. He was too strong for anything they tried to do to him. So they decided to leave him alone and let him stay in the caves up on the hills. In verse 5 it tells us that he was screaming and shouting day and night and cutting himself with stones, bruising his body. Well in my opinion this man was screaming and shouting to try and get rid of the demon inside of him. The spirit he was carrying was a water spirit. I know this because since when Jesus came to release the man from the unclean spirit, they asked, the demon asked, to be sent into the hogs, and Jesus gave them permission to go into the hogs, denoting that Jesus already took authority over the water spirits. Then they went into the pigs and ran for the water. They obviously wanted to be back in their familiar place, which is water. That's why I'm saying they were water spirits. Before, when they were in the man, they couldn't go to the water since they were in one man. They had to enter each individual spirit into a personal animal, in this case the pigs, and then they could run to the water and go back home to where they belonged. Even their name legion, meaning many, tells us that they would not have been happy to drown only one man. Their thirst for drowning or killing is for much more. The water spirits were happy to drown 2,000 pigs in that day. They were satisfied that they got to drown a great number instead of just one man. In real life, pigs do not like water, although they like wet mud, and they would never run out of their own, jumping into a river or a sea, knowing that they would be drowning. Pigs are very intelligent animals. So it was water spirits. These spirits inside of the man were water spirits and that is why they ran into the sea when Jesus commanded them to come out of the man. Where the animals go from land into the sea, uh, into the water in a dream, it signifies a, per a person that is under the influence of a demonic spirit and needs to be cleansed with purifying water of the Holy Spirit. Look at Exodus 10 verse 19. The Lord turned a violent west wind which lifted the locusts and drove them into the Red Sea and not one locust remained in Egypt. Well there again you see, again 
a dream of a huge water creature in the water that stands full of pride and with his head held high could only mean one thing. It refers to an important person who thinks very highly of himself and needs to be given a lesson in humbleness. Look at Ezekiel 29 verse 2 and where the son of man set your face towards Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and prophesy against him. This was an instruction that God gave the prophet. Now you can go and read from Ezekiel 29 verse 2 up to verse 5 to read the whole story there. And uh, so you can see there that the Pharaoh, the king said that the river Nile was his own and he made it for himself, etc. Go and read the whole story. It's really very interesting. So throughout the Bible, God warns us about water spirits. The image of Ashtoreth, a female deity, and Asherah is said to be water spirits which were worshipped by Solomon and his wives. And Saul's armor was put in the house of Ashtoreth, the granddaughter of Beelzebub. God warned the Israelites for worshipping Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, in 1 Kings 11 verse 5. Even the five lords of the Philistines worshipped Dagon, a demon that was half man and half fish. His top was the man part and the bottom was that of a fish. And dreams of water spirits are mostly negative and bad. So if you dream of any water spirits, including mermaids, then immediately start praying against this dream and ask God to deliver you from the message of that dream. In the world today, mermaids are depicted in movies and operas, in books, in paintings. You see them in comics and in movies. And it has been a very popular subject of art in many centuries. The first time people heard of mermaids was in ancient Assyria from which the goddess Atargatis, a Semitic moon goddess, transformed herself into a mermaid half woman and half fish due to shame of accidentally killing her lover. And we see that the killing spirit came through water spirits in real life and also in stories. Well, as we are doing this teaching on mermaids, this is all for this part. There's going to be a part two in this one, which I will do next. And then you can watch them both together and listen to what I'm teaching you about mermaids. Once again, these are not spirits that you want to play with. So when you get a dream of that, pray against it and ask God to uh, protect you from that dream in Jesus' name and by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, until next time, God bless you.